Okay, so this video is going to help us prepare, prepare for exercise 10C on trigonometric identities. And we're going to be moving away from some of the things we've been doing previously, but we will be coming back to all of this kind of stuff that we have here. So I've drawn a triangle here, and it's the triangle we used for the unit circle. And I've said, what else can we learn from this triangle? Now, this triangle has a hypotenuse of one. So you should remember that the amount that it goes across is cos theta. I'm going to be fussy and do it all in the same colour, is cos theta. And then the amount that it is going up is sine theta. And, you know, the tangent, sorry, the tangent is the gradient of that line, but we're not really going to focus on that at this point. So we know that the amount of up and down it goes is sine theta. Well, you look at this and we have got a right angled triangle. And when I see a right angle triangle, I think of two things. One, I think of trigonometry. Two, I think of Pythagoras. So I'm actually going to do Pythagoras on this triangle that I've got here. So Pythagoras would say, I have cos theta squared plus sine theta squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Um, how do I normally do this? I have it sine squared first. So I'm actually just going to switch these around when I write it in this next line, just because it's usually the way that I would say this. Now, sine theta squared, we actually write as sine squared theta. And why do we do that? Well, one, mathematicians are lazy and they don't want to use brackets every time. Two, if you write sine theta squared, that is confusing and makes me think I'm doing the sine of the angle squared, not the overall thing being squared. So I have sine squared theta, and that's how we say it, plus cos squared theta equals one. So what we have come up with here is a very, very, very important trigonometric identity. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. And you may also like to read, write down some rearranged versions of this, that cos squared theta is going to be 1 minus sine squared theta, and that sine squared theta is 1 minus cos squared theta. So these two and this one here are very important and they must be memorised. My little note down here says that sine squared theta is shorthand for sine theta squared. It does not mean that the sine is being squared. This doesn't make sense as sine is a function and not a quantity that we can square. The only thing that we can square is the overall thing because this is a number. Sine is not a number, but sine of theta is a number. And that's the thing that we are squaring. OK, so um, how do we use the Pythagorean identity? It's called the Pythagorean identity because it comes from Pythagoras. Let's try and connect this to some other things. Given that sine alpha, this little symbol down here is called alpha, and you start off by going from here down and around like that, kind of like a little fish sort of shape like this, okay, alpha. Given that sine alpha equals two fifths and that uh, alpha is obtuse, find the exact value of cos alpha and tan alpha. Okay, so um, let's start off by finding the exact value of cos alpha, but they've told us something weird about it being obtuse. We're going to deal with this bit first, and then we'll come back to this bit afterwards. Well, I've got this identity now that sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. doesn't matter that I switched from x to alpha or theta. So I'm going to use the fact that sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha is equal to 1. And we know that sine alpha is 2 fifths, so I can replace this with 2 fifths squared plus cos squared alpha is equal to 1. And so cos squared alpha is equal to 1 minus 4 over 25, because obviously 2 fifths squared is 2 fifths times 2 fifths, which is 4 over 25. So cos squared alpha is 1 minus 4 over 25. I'm feeling lazy, although we could easily do this in our head. So we're going to do 1 minus 4 over 25. It's a shame I've not drawn that properly. 1 minus 4 over 25 is 21 over 25. 
And so moving up here, so I've got a bit more space, this tells me that cos alpha is the square root of that. So I'm just going to root my answer, and it's root 21 over 5. However, it could be plus or it could be minus. Now, this is where we come back to this piece of information. It says that alpha is obtuse. So I'm going to go back to drawing my diagrams, my C, A, S, T diagrams. Now, if it's obtuse alpha, that means that the angle is somewhere over in this section. And this tells me that sine is the only thing that is positive over here. This tells me then that cos alpha is negative. And because cos alpha is negative, that must mean that cos alpha is minus root 21 over 5. The reason that cos alpha is negative is because alpha is obtuse. Now, I want to find out what tan alpha is. Tan alpha, we know, the other identity, is sine alpha over cos alpha. And I'm going to just quickly remind us of where that was. I think we did that way back at the beginning. Um, have I got that written down anywhere? Yep, tan, tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. We looked at that a few videos ago. Let's get back to where we were. If I can find what we've done. Okay, so now I can actually just find out what tan alpha is by substituting in some values. So sine alpha is two fifths and cos alpha is minus root 21 over five. And I can see I've got some fractions within fractions. I've got a fraction up here and I've got a fraction up here. So to get rid of those fractions within fractions, I can multiply the top by 5 and I can multiply the bottom by 5. So I get 2 over root 21 and it's negative. And I can either leave it as that or I can rationalize it as 2 minus 2 root 21 over 21. Notice also that tan alpha here is negative and that makes sense because sine is the only one that is positive in this section so i'm expecting cos and tan to be negative um okay let's keep going i'm going to do one more in this section and it says that cos alpha sorry cos theta is minus three fifths and that theta is reflex find the exact value of sine theta and tan theta so i'm going to start off with my identity that sine squared theta equal well not equals sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one so sine squared theta plus minus three fifths squared is equal to one so sine squared theta when you square this negative it's obviously going to be positive is going to be 9 over 25. So sine squared theta is 1 minus 9 over 25. Let's be really lazy. I, I would do this in my head. 1 minus 9 over 25 is obviously going to be 16 over 25. Coming up here, that must mean sine theta is the square root of 16 over 25. Square root of 16 is 4, square root of 25 is 5. And it could be positive or it could be negative. This is where you're going to draw your diagram to see what it's going to be. Now, it says that it's reflex. Reflex actually could be in the third quadrant or it could be in the fourth quadrant. But it doesn't really matter which one it's in because if it's down here, sine is definitely not positive. Sine is positive up here. So sine is going to be negative, which tells me that sine theta... So theta is reflex, so sine theta is a negative, it's minus four fifths. All we have to do now is find out what tan theta is. Now tan theta is sine theta over cos theta, and sine theta is minus four fifths, and cos theta is minus three fifths, because remember they told us that in the question, cos theta is minus three fifths. Now, I'm going to just do the same thing as I did before. I've got fractions within fractions. I want to get rid of those denominators by multiplying by 5. So I've got minus 4 over minus 3. The negatives cancel, and you just get 4 over 3. Now, it's interesting to note that tan theta is positive. Cos theta is negative. Sine theta is negative. And it said it's reflex. So actually, we know which quadrant it's in. It must be in this quadrant because tan is positive, 
sine is negative and cos is negative. Okay, I'm going to split this up because we're going to be going into some proof, which feels like quite a different topic. Um, but this will help you with a few questions from exercise 10c.